The relationship between people and fire has shaped Victoria's natural environment for at least 40,000 years. However, the dramatic decline of Aboriginal influence following the arrival of Europeans 160 years ago has irreversibly altered this relationship. Where once there were only forests, there is now a mosaic of farmland and bush dotted with scattered houses and townships. Where once there were only trees and wildlife, there are now utilities, assets and industry, important water catchments and valuable timber regrowth. No longer can wildfires be allowed to burn unchecked. Yet our forests require periodic fire to sustain and reinvigorate them. And the forest fuel and undergrowth needs to be managed so that if fire does occur, it will be less damaging and easier to control. The managers of Victoria State Forests and National Parks are responsible for minimising the fire threat on 7.5 million hectares of public land which comprises about a third of the state. This includes preventing and controlling unplanned fires and the intentional use of fire to achieve specific land management objectives such as flora and fauna protection. Each autumn and spring, strategic fuel reduction burns are conducted throughout the state's parks and forests. Strategically reducing the amount of undergrowth and litter on the forest floor not only assists in controlling wildfires when they occur, but can also mimic the natural ecological processes to which our forests and wildlife are adapted. Now in the mountain forest, when we saw the forest, uh, fires move through uh, northeast Victoria and Gippsland, there are lots of good examples there where um, fires that had uh, been burnt in the previous few years, the fire moved much more slowly through those areas. So in some cases the fire stopped in those areas altogether, but more typically the fire moved slowly through there. So there was one area in the Buckland Valley, for example, where the fire took about three days to move through an area that had been fuel reduced. Regardless of the amount of fuel reduction achieved each autumn, wildfires will still occur during summer. In an average fire season, 640 fires will be ignited in Victorian parks and forests, of which about two-thirds are caused by accidental or deliberate human activity, with lightning causing the rest. At the approach of each fire season, careful planning in conjunction with agencies such as the Country Fire Authority and the Victoria Police is essential to ensure firefighting operations will be effectively coordinated, particularly when fires burn close to the boundaries between public and private land. Successful wildfire control relies on being able to pinpoint the location of fires as soon as possible after they start. This is achieved through a network of around 70 observation towers scattered throughout the state. With assistance at critical times provided by aerial surveillance from specially chartered aircraft. When wildfires occur, the department can call on up to 2,000 trained specialist personnel for fire suppression operations, as well as an additional 500 to 800 temporary project firefighters who are employed and trained each season. Operational resources include 81 water tankers and an additional 265 smaller slip-on tanker units, as well as 32 small first attack bulldozers. When required, Larger firefighting machinery is contracted from the timber industry and local earth moving companies. In addition, the department, in conjunction with the CFA, manages a fleet of over 20 specialised aircraft for observation and mapping, personnel transport and water bombing, which is an integral part of many operations to support ground crews by slowing the progress of uncontrolled fires. Victoria's park and forest managers have for many years had strong links with wildland fire managers in other states, as well as those in other countries such as the USA, Canada and New Zealand. Yeah, well the agreement between Australia and the US to, to exchange firefighters makes perfect sense. Our seasons jibe so well. Uh, 
you know, this is our downtime right now, and so for us to be here, it's, it's the perfect time for us to be here fighting fire, and uh, vice versa when you guys come to the States. Interim links with other nations are also being developed. Under emergency situations, deployments of firefighters to or from other states and countries has been very effective in the past and will no doubt continue to be in the future. The underlying principle of successful fire forest suppression is to starve the flames of fuel, either by constructing earth breaks right on the fire edge, known as direct attack, or by backburning from control lines located well ahead of the fire front, known as indirect attack. On remote forest fires where access is difficult, the department has had great success using strike crews lowered from the air into fires whilst they are still small and able to be more easily controlled. These crews are expert in the use of dry firefighting techniques that can be very effective at containing fires without the use of water. However, if required, water bombing aircraft can provide the support needed to ensure successful control. Fires in more accessible country are fought from roads or fire breaks constructed by bulldozers. These provide access for water tankers that can effectively extinguish burning material. After a fire is being contained within control lines, blacking out and patrol are necessary to ensure no sparks are blown into adjacent unburnt country. This may take days or even weeks on very large fires. Behind the scenes during peak fire periods, an emergency coordination centre runs 24 hours a day, relaying fire and weather information to relevant agencies, the media and the community. Technology plays a key role in providing information to fire controllers. The department's firewood network enables them to quickly access important data about forest types and fuels, anticipated rates of spread, asset types and location, weather and resource and equipment availability. At all times during wildfire suppression operations, the safety of firefighters and the community is paramount. Where forest fires have potential to threaten private property, efforts are made to ensure the local community is kept informed and advised on how best to secure their properties against potential loss or damage. Supporting the frontline firefighters can be an enormous undertaking on larger fires. A virtual army of departmental personnel and relief agencies is required to keep them fed and fit for duty at large base camps set up at appropriate locations. As soon as fires are declared safe, the recovery process begins. Areas of forest disturbed by fire suppression operations are rehabilitated in accordance with Victoria's Code of Practice for Fire Management. And comprehensive debriefings gather information that will improve future fire control efforts. The department's operational and logistical capabilities were severely tested by the 2002-2003 fire season, which became Victoria's most extensive since 1939. Fuels rendered tinder dry by six years of below average rainfall were ignited by lightning first in mid-December when 181,000 hectares of diverse Mallee woodland were burnt in the big desert. Then, over a 59 day period stretching from early January to March 2003, over 1.1 million hectares of mountain and alpine parks and state forest were blackened in northeastern and eastern Victoria. Forest fire will always be part of Victoria's natural environment. Very destructive fires have occurred periodically since European settlement in 1851, 1898, 1926, 1939, 1944, 1983, as well as the recent 2003 fires. We are learning from these fires to be better prepared for the challenges of the future. For almost 50 years, the department has overseen a comprehensive forest fire research program. Major research themes include studying and monitoring the effects of fire on biodiversity and improving techniques of forest fuel management and fire suppression. 
Although there is still much to be learned, we can at least be certain that as new growth sprouts from the blackened trunks, the forest will slowly regenerate as it has done so many times before.